What's up guys, and today we're going to be looking at my garage. I did a video earlier today of uh, an IS4 game. Um, or yesterday, or whenever, whenever this video goes up. Uh, a couple of you guys kind of requested to see what was in my garage, and how I feel about these tanks, and tell you things about them, and I figured I'd go do that. Uh, a lot has changed since the last time I did a garage video. Um, I do not have a T92 anymore. Uh, there is one premium tank gone that I have to get back. I accidentally sold it. And, yeah. Anyways, first up on the list is T2 Lite, really. Um, just a fun tank. I ended up ha putting the crew on that um, into my chaffee, I believe. And it's one of these. Um... You can pick it up for like 850 gold, I believe. Um, it's just a really fun, little small tank. You you can you don't make a lot of credits in it, but you don't have to to have fun. It's just about what you're doing. It's one of the, if not the fastest tank in the game, and it's just fun when you play it. Uh, next tank is Chaffee. I just recently got this. Um, as you can tell, I got 27,000 XP on it. Um, not really a whole lot to say other than I need to start playing it more to be better at it. Um, I don't have a mastery badge or anything in it. But I really like this tank, and I'm glad I got it. It's uh, it, probably my favorite light tank other than the AMX 1390. T71's okay, but I, I like this one a lot more than I do the T71. Next up, Sephirian. First thing you're going to notice, oh, War Daddy's not in here. Blasphemy. Eh, no. Okay, he's... War Daddy's in a safer place, if you ask me. Um... No, he didn't get re... Well, he got reassigned to another tank. But the other tank's a little bit... Bigger. Like, a lot bigger. But, um... Yeah, you, you can't... I don't think you can get this tank anymore. You might be able to... I don't know, because I got it within the first couple days of it coming out originally... And I was told it's been in the, like, the store forever. Like, they didn't take it out. And then they added it in again. And then they took it out. And some other crap. But, um, this is a really good premium tank. Uh, it's just like an E8. Uh, with the, it comes with, uh, vertical stabilizer, rammer, and vents, I believe. And this... Just a decent tank makes a lot of good money. Um, true Grainer, or it's a true Grainer, crew trainer. If you're looking for one, you can't get it anymore, but still, you get the point. And the Super Persian, which I take that back. The crew that was in this is now in my chappy. But I picked this up uh, around Christmas. Uh, this is a good tier eight if you're looking for one. Uh, the guns kind of low on pin but you have spaced armor and everything on the front and it's my Pershing's gone because uh, I'm getting ready to get a tier 10 tank and I can get the Pershing back no problem and I've been rolling nothing but premium tanks here recently and uh, yeah I just haven't rolled the Super Persian in, I don't know, a couple days, really. Uh, that's why there's no XP on it, because I didn't have a lot of XP on it to start with, because I had other premium tanks. And yada yada, move on to the T-57 Heavy Tank. Now, as you can see, I use this thing a lot. 837,000 experience. Um, This line is kind of weird, because it goes uh, medium, light, light, medium, medium, heavy. And if you're looking for an auto loader that is borderline overpowered and fun to play, T57 Heavy. If you just want one that uh, makes people cry, uh, you get the Waffenschlager. If you if you just this tank can hold its own. Uh, its armor is kind of troll. Uh, the cheeks easy to pin. Uh, it's just it's like an M103 hull with a chipmunk cheeks and a gun. That's all I can explain. Uh, so if you ever played the M103, you know how the body armor works, and the turret's just a total, like, new thing, and when you play, um, the T69, T54, you get an idea of how the turret's gonna be on this. Um, if you play the E5, it's the same gun, just auto-loader form, and a little bit less accurate, you get it. And, then here's the E5, um, I 
I've had this for a while. I just really don't play it considering it, it's good. It's just the the machine gun turret up on the top is just a letdown for me with this tank. I wiggle and all this other stuff. People still manage to hit it. I when I do play it, I do really well. Uh, especially when I platooned up with people, this is one of my go-to tanks to platoon up with. But if I'm playing solo, I will play something else every now and then. <sighs> Excuse me. I'll play this when I'm playing solo because I do like the tank, and it's got really good armor on the front. Just don't let people get inside you and or behind you because that'll ruin your day. And move on again to the T30. There's War Daddy. He's in a little bit bigger tank, like I said. If this was in the movie when they fought the tiger, the tiger may not have got to kill the Shermans. But that's just my opinion. Um, as you can see in my video talking about the E4, I am 15,000 away from it. Yes, there's a lot of free XP up there. Don't judge me. I didn't want to play this thing as much as I thought I would. This is a good tank and all. When you have the t when you have it stock, say you didn't go down the um, E3 line or any any line of that in particular, because the 120 millimeter guns on the T28, the 95, and the T28 prototype, so you should have the first package free and. It's like a better T29 because it shoots faster. And then you get the 120 millimeter on it. It's a better T34 because it shoots faster. Then you get the 155. And that makes the T30 the T30. Now with the 120, you can play it more like a heavy tank. With the T 155, you can still play it like a heavy tank. But you got to play it as like a slower paced heavy tank because of the 18 second long reload with a rammer. Uh... You just have to really know what you're doing with this tank to do well. Not saying that people have good games all the time because they're like, oh, I like the T29, I like the T34, I like the T30. Fair enough, that'd work. Just, since there are different tiers, the body armor of this thing is terrible. The turret armor is amazing. But the commander's hatch and the top of the turret can be overmatched by some tanks. Which kind of sucks, but if you think about it, you got a big gun to back people up, and this makes the T30 T30. It's a really good tank, in my opinion. Uh, the E4 will be in my garage either today or tomorrow, or whenever I decide to get it, because uh, I have quite an amount of experience to go. And we move on. See what's at E3. I use this thing pretty often, really. Because I've had this when my friend went and he got his T95. And I told him when he gets the 155mm on his T95, I'll buy back my T95 and we'll get the E3 together. That happened. We got the E3 together. Uh, then my other friend got the E3. We had a three-man E3 platoon. And then my girlfriend came over one day and she was like, Hey, I want to try this game. So I let her play low tiers and then she played my... I think some heavy tank and she was like ah, I want something a little bit bigger gun and I put her in the E3 she's like I want this she's on the T28 right now she's gonna get the T110 E3 and it's gonna be amazing she's about a hundred thousand away from the T95 and she's like oh the T28 sucks and I'm like just bear with it get the 95 that'll readjust your whole thing about the line when you get the 155 on the T95 it's just the T95 is its own tank. I mean, you can't compare it to anything. Uh, and then we move on to the M53 and T5. The almighty skill cannon. Don't let anybody tell you that this tank sucks. Unless you're the person getting shot by it, and you can say whatever you want to about it, because I've been killed a lot by them. And I know how it is. It's very frustrating. Uh, its gun is huge, it shoots fast, it's accurate. It's better than the T92 in almost every single way. The T92 is so, so, so inaccurate. But when it hits people, it does a lot of damage. I can't really recommend the T92 to anybody other than the fact that if you know 
kind of how inaccurate tanks are and you gotta kind of deal with it perfect there's your tank but if you're like want a really accurate artillery tank don't get the T92 stick with the M53 or M55 the whole line leading up to the T92 though is decent they're just I can't really explain like tier 7 it's the M12 with the upgraded gun is good. The it gets the same gun on the M40 and 43. So when you get the 203 millimeter howitzer, it's the 8 inch is what it is, and um, that's about it with that. Next, the Death Star with almost two and a half million XP built up on this thing and an insane crew on it. Um, I've had this for a while. I think this was like my fourth tier 10. And this is my hate mail tank, mainly because people are like, I got one here recently that some guy called me a one-shot modder, right? Uh, I would show you the, uh, I would play the, like, message, but I don't want to do the name and shame kind of thing. But he was like, one-shot modder, you suck, you, you, you cheat to win and all this other stuff and I was like, he was in an E4, okay and I sent him a message back and I was like, so you've been in tier 10 and you've yet to have been shot by one of these things fair enough, he still he still filed a complaint at 1750 Alpha, um I have a lot more TDs and heavy tanks than I do medium tanks, as you've seen, there's only been one in my garage so far that's a higher high-ish tier and it's still not really considered a medium tank. But, let's move on to the Micro Mouse. I picked this thing up back when it first came out. And this is probably my girlfriend's favorite tank. Because uh, she got her one right after I bought mine. And uh, there's nothing really to explain about this. That I had like three or four perks up on this thing. And I moved it to one of my other tanks. And... Uh, yeah, there's 116,000 experience on there. You can call me a seal clubber if you want. But they, when the T7 combat car came out, this was the tank to be in. I killed 10 people. It was amazing. No one could do anything about me. And then the Panzer 2J. If you don't know how to get the Panzer 2J, this is simple. All you gotta do is wait till your Xbox Live runs out. Sign in the World of Tanks. It's gonna tell you, oh, your Xbox Live's ran out. Um, renew or something like that. Renew it while you're in the Xbox uh, World of Tanks screen, and you get three days of premium time and a premium tank. This is the premium tank. And if you don't know what the Panzer 2J is, you're, you're not really missing out on anything, except that the fact that this is probably the most trolliest tank in the game, and it's hilarious to play. Except for the times that you always get into Tier 4 games, you can't honestly do what this tank could do if it was locked at tier 3 because that would be kind of overpowered. Only like a handful of tanks would be able to pin you. But um, 80 millimeters on the front, uh, 50 on the sides I believe. Don't hate me. Yeah, 50 on the sides and 50 on the rear. You could see how this thing would get a little bit annoying. And But the gun, the gun is so bad. It's a two centim it's a tier 1 gun with a whole 23 pin and 46 with the premium rounds and you have to be pretty much point blank for the premium rounds to even pin because it's still 46 pin and the Panzer 5.4 now this is an original Founders yes I was one of the people who bought the Founders Part 2 on the one year anniversary don't hate me because I got one as you can see I have the one thing on the side if you have the original one you have a black star um, this is a really fun tank. I like ramming things. That's pretty much all I can say about this tank, is that it's really good. And if you didn't get one, you're missing out. It isn't all it's cracked up to be, though. It's not. It's still o kind of overpowered, but it's not overpowered overpowered because it's still easy to kill. It just has an insane amount of health. But, uh, yeah. Let's move on to my favorite medium tank in the game, the E50M. The crew that is in this was in the Panzer 38H, which I found hilarious. You guys think about it. You got a crew in a tier 2 light tank, and 
they're like, oh, we're down here at Tier 2, we're seal clubbing the crap out of these guys the next day. Oh, we're at an E50M, we have to fix ourselves. I find that funny, but I don't know. This thing is crazy. This is, it's, when I compare heavy tanks, I compare it to, like, damage of the other tanks that they do. And with the 120mm gun, does 400 damage, this does 390. This has a point. I think 31 accuracy, 0 0.30 accuracy, and a 2.09 aim time, 270 pin versus 258 pin. You see my point? I think this gun's better than the gun on the E5, but that's just me. Um, the turret's good. It's hard to hit the front of it, but uh, you get it to the sides any, uh, they're going to hit it. It's kind of hard to pin like that because it'll bounce off the sides. Uh, anyways, we'll move on. Two de Moose. Yeah. If you watched any of the whole, like, 11,000 videos I've done about this thing, you would understand that this is probably my favorite tank in the game. Uh, I'm not like the normal mouse driver that just rides up there and dies. I actually attempt to try, and I do pretty good. Anyways, um... That's about really all I gotta say about this thing. If you want to learn more about it, just watch the mouse like review or watch my other ones, and you'll get a general idea that this thing is just a slow-moving monster that doesn't like artillery and high-tier tank destroyers because some people just decide to start shooting pin, uh, high-pin premium rounds and just don't care about my front armor or angling and stuff like that. Then we have the E100, my second tier 10, I believe. And this is the best sniping tank in the game. You always camp at the back behind the tank destroyers and medium tanks in this thing. Uh, I'm not making any of this stuff up. You fire premium rounds the whole game because you get 300 and I think 34. E... 334 pin with the heat rounds because you have the best accuracy in the game at 0 .40 and a 2.9 aim time at 3 rounds a minute. Why not snipe at the back of the map? I'm totally kidding about that. Please don't, please don't do that and be like, "Oh, I watched this guy on YouTube tell me to do this." And I'm like, "Who told you?" I'm like, "Chris Grizzly," and they're gonna start showing up in my house with pitchforks and torches. Don't do this. Please don't do this to me. Anyways, no, this is this is a really good tank. You just have to play it kind of up in your face. Um, it's got thick armor. It's just it's flat. On, well, kind of really flat, but the front of the turret's pretty good. Just tank destroyers will shoot through it. Other than that, the upper plate's pretty much immune to a lot of things, and the lower plate's weak as normal. And you angle it about like that, and you're you're about well set. The side skirts and tracks will eat up a lot of shots. And we have the Dicker Max. I don't even know. I don't even know. Don't even judge. I'm going to do a review of this sometime, but it's just hang in there with me because this thing is just, it's 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 a tank but it's just there other than that it gets a good gun it's just that this is the same gun that's on the stir mill right and it's more accurate I assume I think I don't know this thing has like no armor although you'll bounce some shots off the gun mantlet don't count on it uh, KV2s hate you, and it doesn't have preferential matchmaking. I'll be doing a review on this. I like this tank. It's just, it's one of those tanks, man, that you try so hard to like, and you get a couple good games, and you still can't say it's your favorite. And that's about it for that. We'll get back to that when the review shows up. And my first premium tank that I ever owned was a Jag Dagger 8.8. And this is the money maker. This is the thing that you use to make money. And I can't tell you how much I've made off of just playing this thing. Although when they had the bonus for like uh, five times, I played the five times in this thing. Killed, I think, six or seven people and got 692,000 silver off of playing this. If you want a money maker, this is the money maker because it's easy to play. Got a good gun, just don't hit for a whole lot. It's a tiger's gun, just shoots faster. 
And here's my first tier 10, Jack Panzer U100. I wanted this name simply because of the gun. I didn't show you the gun, don't judge me. That's the gun. It's pretty accurate. Um, 299 pin, uh, 420 with the um, heat rounds. It's pretty crazy. Anyways, um, this is another one of those tanks that you kind of got to play different now since there's more tanks in the game. Uh, they can shoot through your superstructure with premium rounds because it always happens. This is one of those tanks that people blame for having like on purposeful bad RNG on it and that's not the case it's just you you remind yourself of more bad things that happen over time you don't remember the good things because your brain's telling you about the bad things because it's really confusing more people that play this thing have bad things happen to them for whatever reason but I like this tank I'll back up anybody's decision to get this and here's the other hate mail tank that I don't know why I have, but I have it, because why not? I didn't rush for it though. I kind of just slowly got this thing. Uh, your turret's nothing but a, um, a tin cup that has been molded. It's like a large, it's like a large gas tank. That's, you know how thin gas tanks are really. It's, it's just molded to fit around this like little they made like a freaking A-frame roof and they put some seats in it and put a little swivel chair down there where the gun is and they made it swing around on the E-100 chassis and put a gun in it and they were like let's go and that's how we made it. that's how they made an E-100 that's how they made the Waffentrager E-100 totally how they made it don't judge me because like I know my stuff and that's how they made this I will 100% guarantee you if you ask any German engineers, if this thing was to be made, which wasn't this thing completely fake, they're like, oh, we took a gas tank that we found, made an A-frame roof out of it, and stuck a gun in it, put a swivel chair on the little chassis thing, and that's how we made the E-100. Anyways, move on to the bat chat. One of my other favorite things that I had a problem with, um, it was just... I had like really bad times with this tank because I didn't know how to play it, but nah, since then I do, and this is getting to be, if not, like I call it a light tank, this is going to be one of my favorite light tanks, put that in quotations, because it kind of is, but um, let's move on again, T-62A, my second, well actually this is my first medium tank, but um, I just I stopped playing it completely. Like I just went cold turkey on this thing, never played it because I don't know why. I just didn't really know how to play medium tanks. But since then, I've got more stuff into the game. Like almost nineteen and a half thousand battles later. Yeah, look at those horrible win loss ratios and tanks and stuff. And my ninety battles in the T one ten E five. Whatever. Anyways, um, yeah. I know how to play medium tanks now, better than I did. KVG20, there's a review of this. If you'd like to know about this tank, go watch the video. Um, totally worth the gold I paid for it. Um, good money tank, doesn't see tier 7s, doesn't need to. It's a really strong tank, just the gun's a little on the low side for pin and stuff. But, um, move on. IS6, I have a review up of this. Don't know why I have 932, oh, never mind. I have like 850 gold left, and I kind of just... Oh, 1850 gold left and I was just like let's move it all to free XP and that's how I ended up 57,000 yep but here we go IS-6 in all its glory and we move on the IS-4 a meaner IS-6 and with this thing if you want to see the review watch the review if you want to see just me derping around in it watch the previous video and that's about it with that this gun's kind of it's a good tank I like it and here comes the beast, the IS-7. When this thing first came out, this was one of the tanks to have because no one knew where to shoot it. Because look at that. Who who would who would start messing with that thing from the front? That thing just looks scary. And, yeah. I'll do a review on this soon. No people want it. And here we go. 
SU-122-44. I gotta do a review on this one too. Uh, expect it here soon. Probably I'm gonna do the IS-7 first, then the SU-122 or the E-4. Expect one of those three. I have too many reviews and not enough time. Sorry for this video being so long, it's just I had a lot to go over. But anyways, um, yeah, let's move on again to the Object 268, my most recent Tier 10 that I have got. Um, this thing is nothing, the body is nothing special, it's the gun. 450 pin with the heat rounds. Now you can't tell me that's not special. And it got a recent buff to shoot faster. Didn't need it, but it did somehow manage to get one. And it's more accurate. I like this more to do the E3. Just the grind is insane to get. But anyways, guys, that is the end. I did have a Type 5 Chinook Kai. I accidentally sold it. That In the T-3488, I kind of purposely sold the Chinook Kai. Hate me if you want. But I'm getting the T-3488 back, and then I'm going to get the Chinook Kai back. But anyways, guys, that's the end of that. And I hope you guys are having a good day and liked what I said and like seeing my garage but anyway peace